right, you start saying in the beginning that you wrote this book for physics students. Yes. But you must remember that engineering students uh, at Rensselaer were in a professional curriculum because engineering is the only profession you can enter with just a bachelor's degree. For physics or chemistry or medicine or law, you go on to post undergraduate work. So their undergraduate program was highly professional. So that teaching physics to these people was to these engineers was the same as teaching it to physicists. But that's but, not true for large scale universities, right? This is particular for Rensselaer. Well, uh, a lot of the the biology or pre-med students did not want calculus. This was a calculus-based text, so that was excluded. And probably one mistake we did make was not to put enough examples from medicine and biology in, which I hope we're beginning to overcome now. Uh, the next but, well, but you must remember, I'm 76, that's years of age, no. and ha Halliday's 82, and uh, when I retired six years ago, the publisher said, uh, this property is too valuable, that's the way they talk, you gotta find a, th a young third author to carry on and work with them. Uh, well, Ken Crane, uh, marvelous physicist, uh, we got to join on on physics, uh, worked together with him on the, I guess it's the fourth edition, and the fifth edition is now about ready to come out, it'll take about a year. And we got Gerald Walker for the fundamentals of physics. And we've been through two editions with him, and now neither Dave nor I uh, do much with him at all. And of course, I think the publisher wants to play on whatever value our names have, uh, but they can't, the value can't be much as years go by. People say, who the hell are they? Like, who's Houseman Slack? Or something like that. So we're fading away while kicking. I don't know, did I answer your question? Well, it's all mine. I, mean, I, I still think that uh, you were greatly disturbed by choosing books which are written for physics students and using them for pre to use oh, them for you, One thing you must understand, I don't, I don't adopt, if you're using my book at Texas, I had nothing to do with that. I did not adopt it. Some professor here decided that of the 30 books, that's the one he wanted for his class. So that's his mistake. I'm serious. Not mine. Uh, if they want to join on a bandwagon effect to the detriment of the students, that's no good. And I object to that too. I mean, I couldn't understand my book being used as a freshman at the University of Mississippi in 1960. It just didn't make any sense to me. Uh, they probably flunked half the class, and they hate my guts. And it never should have been used there. Uh, so I think that's a fair answer. I, I remember when I was talking out at Stanford, uh, and they felt that I owed them a, a visit and a talk because they'd been using my book all those years. And I reminded them that I didn't make the choice. I wasn't at Stanford. You guys chose it, not me. I don't owe you a thing. <laughs> uh, think about that. I think that's a fair answer to your question. Yeah, the problem is you're so successful that you get copied. I mean, the other 30 books I can pick from. Uh, uh, can you, I, I'm sorry, I don't follow that. Manfred's claim is that other authors have now followed your pattern. Oh, I'm sure. A long textbook for these other people. And, and again, just like the adopters, it's not Bob's fault. No, no, no. Well, I, I think Sears and Zemanski represented a paradigm shift, too. It lasted about 20 years, what they did. And ours has gone on for 40. Maybe it's time for a change. I think it is. Um, but... Uh, I told you how people changed erect to upright. I mean, that's absurd, right? If they knew how come that happened, you know, they'd be ashamed of themselves. Uh, it's a bandwagon effect. Uh, I had an answer, and it's escaping me now to, to tune in closer to, to what you said. Uh, Tell him to write his own. <laughs> you know, uh, I've, I think I mentioned to you before that somebody said to me, Bob, you're 76, you ought to be thinking of the hereafter. And I said, I'm always thinking of the hereafter when I go to the living room, the dining room, the study, the kitchen. I'm always saying, what am I hereafter? <laughs> and, uh, so I'm sorry, I have one of those memory lapses right now. I was tuning right into you, and it just disappeared.
Uh, I think we should, uh, uh, and is this the Dave Halliday or Bob Resnick? That, uh, which one of the, anyway, thank you, Bob. <laughs> okay. Uh, enjoy your cake. <laughs>